Hello everyone, and welcome to the second edition of Cindy Life. My name is Jeremy Singh, and I'm the editor of Cindy. Together with me in the studio today are Raymond Tan, who also writes for Cindy, as well as a special guest. He's our, he's our first special guest for this program. Um, he wrote a book in 2005, which chronicled the development of Singapore cinema um, from the turn of the century to um, the contemporary times. Well, of course, um, to, to 2005. And the title of the book is Singapore Cinema, and his name is Raphael Millet. Welcome, Raphael, to the show. And today, the three of us are going to talk about Anthony Chen's recent win of the Camera Door at the Cannes Film Festival. So, Raphael, what do you think about the win? Yeah, I think it's excellent news and you should all just rejoice. It's uh, something that happens not all the time. It's a very competitive world, even the festival circuit. Um, and getting the Camera Door is really a major win for someone like Anthony. Um, I think it's a step forward, actually, for the Singapore film industry. And um, it's something to look forward to because it's a validation of the uh, latest developments over the last few years. And uh, I don't know, what, what does winning the camera door mean for, for a filmmaker? Is it something up your alley to answer this? Or? Yeah, it's really, the, the, the camera door is really meant to encourage a, a new filmmaker, usually a first time filmmaker, first feature film, uh, someone who's displayed uh, good enough qualities, you know, to believe in his future and we want to encourage him to make a second movie. So, for someone like Anthony, he's really telling him, okay, go ahead, do something else, you know. Well, obviously with, uh, you know, Anthony's win, um, suddenly a lot more um, filmmakers or, or, or the, the film appreciating world out there will open, will pay attention to local films. But um, I'm really curious to know, how have people uh, been viewing local films um, over these years. I mean, um, you know, it started with Eric. Eric Koo was the first one who brought Singapore films to the film festival circuit with um, uh, 12 stories, if I'm not wrong, uh, in, in Cannes um, several years ago. Uh, and obviously, over the years, people have, um, I mean, the people who've been attentive enough have watched um, more local films or more filmmakers. But so, from all these films, how do you think people have viewed? local films. Okay, I'm gonna, maybe I'll direct the question first to Raymond. Um, how do you think the home audience views local films? Okay, I, uh, okay, speaking for what? anecdotal experience, okay, <laughs> I think a lot of my friends, they kind of associate, um, yeah, they kind of just associate national cinema with Jack Neo. <laughs> for better or for worse, la. I mean, to be honest, Jack Neo, Jack Neo, I mean, obviously, he's a very prominent figure in national cinema, but it's quite a pity that a lot of people don't know of about you know um, less known filmmakers. Actually, these less known filmmakers are actually quite popular among our the, the industry, like you know Eric Khoo and and Bu Jin Fong, etc. Royston Tan. But a lot of people who are not like the hardcore cinephiles, they they just know Jack Neo. Basically, that's it. And so yeah, they they have this a uh, very stereotypical idea of what Singapore cinema is, lah. Yeah. And how do you think, Rafael? How how I mean, from the friends, I mean, that, that you know, I mean, you're, you're, you're not born in Singapore. Um, what kind of feedback have you, have you got from people? How, when you mention, you know, Singapore cinema, what's the impression? What, what comes to mind? Well, my feeling is that they don't know Jack New, uh, <laughs> or not at first. They know something else, and if they know something, they would know Eric Koo, of course, Royston, Tan a bit, Bu Jung Feng, uh, now Anthony Chen, so that's, that's excellent. Uh, but. I think to be to be honest with it, uh, very few people would know about it because uh, Singapore cinema is still uh, very niche, and uh, only people who attend the festival circuits would see it. Because how many times do you have a chance to see in a movie theater uh, the commercial release of a Singapore movie outside of Singapore? Even in Singapore, it's difficult. So can you imagine what it is outside? So I'd like to ask you, what was your first? What was the first Singapore movie you watched before you came to Singapore? I think the very first thing I saw without really knowing it was a Singapore movie was Cleopatra Wong um, because it had been released as part of the whole martial arts fleet craze from the early 80s. There were some uh, movie theaters specialized in showing these kind of movies in Paris on what we call the Grand Boulevard, the Great Boulevards. Uh, and then these movies went to the, to, to the video uh, market, typically the old VHS, you know, and I saw that. but. Um, when I really became aware of Singapore cinema 
it's when Eric Ku had 12 stories being shown in Cannes, I think in 97, and I knew it was a Singapore movie. It stood out as a Singapore movie. Uh, people had interest in it because there was this growing curiosity for Asian movies due to, you know, the growing Taiwanese uh, film industry, the fifth generation in China. And having a Singapore movie suddenly was part of it, you know, and people were excited. Um, so I think that's when it really started. But it's not the first movie I saw when I came to Singapore. What was the first movie you watched when you came to Singapore? When I came to Singapore, the first thing I saw, two weeks after I arrived, was uh, I'm Not Stupid by Jack New. And I thought oh. it in the movie theater, <laughs> Ballester Road, the show, show theater over there. And I had fun. And it was good to see it within Singapore context, with a Singapore crowd, see how people reacted. And I must say, it was a good movie, good production value good sense of humor and I liked it and I definitely looked forward uh, more to Jack New movie afterwards. Were you familiar with Singapore culture before you watched the movie? How, how many years have you been in Singapore before you watched the movie? Which one? Jack uh, New? Ja, ja, I'm not stupid. Two weeks. Two weeks. So you're totally foreign to, to Singapore I'm culture? Totally foreign but I already had an idea of what Singapore looked like whereas when you haven't stepped uh, to Singapore yet you have very little ideas of what the island looked like. So do you, do, you, do you think um, from what you saw in I'm Not Stupid it's an accurate portrayal of life in Singapore or do you think Jack Neal has, has kind of handed it up a bit um, beyond what's real? Yeah, I think he has his ways of doing things and sometimes he's a bit over the top but by being over the top he manages to create a certain discourse about things. He's got his style uh, just like Royston Tan has got his own way of speaking about Singapore, Eric also and so on. So, But I think having people like Eric who and now Anthony Chen, and at the other end, Jack New, it covers the whole spectrum of the film industry. And that's, that's good. True. You need to cover the spectrum. And then you don't need one single movie to do everything for you. How about you, Raymond? What was the first uh, Singapore movie you watched? Okay, H- how uh, old are you, by the way? I am 27. Okay. So uh, for me, it was actually um, kind of like the opposite of Raphael. I started off from Jack New. I think the very first one I watched was... Um, probably i not stupid at least the one I remember the first one I remember watching was i not stupid because you know I actually grew up with Gao Xiao Xing Tong which was the sketch comedy <laughs> show by, by Jack Neo so um, I, I think that that's the first one I actually remember watching and it was only much later to, and when I was in university then I actually started to exp- you know, broaden my horizons because I actually took this course called um, this course on Singapore film it was actually administered by um, or run, basically run by Dr. Edna Lim and she's quite a prominent um, academic in ter- when it comes to local cinema. So during that course, I actually got the chance to watch a lot of, of films. At first, I thought it was very morbid because a lot of the, you know, the art house films or whatever, the more independent films, they tend to, in Singapore, they tend to be a little bit um, depressing, especially like very cool films. Like, they tend to be a little bit more grim and everything. But... I, I, I grew to really love them and during my university days I would just watch a lot of, of films and local films yeah okay um, well the first movie I watched the first local movie I watched was actually Army Days um, maybe with Our Boys to Men not, not many people remember Army Days now <laughs> <laughs> or they may remember it even more sure. yeah the <laughs> um, but there's a continuation yes but I, I just felt I I mean, watching Army Days didn't feel like watching a movie because um, at that time, um, the Singapore film scene has not developed yet, but the theatre scene was developing quite fast and quite well. And I just saw it as an extension of, of theatre because it followed the Army Days script very closely. Um, and But unfortunately, I went overseas to study for about three years, so I missed out on a lot of, a lot of local releases, including I'm Not Stupid when I was, when I was in the UK. Um, and I came back... Um, I have to say, when I came back, after, um, I mean, there was a bit of a drought before this new resurgence came back in 2005 when there were a lot of new independent films made, but Army Days was the first one. But the first film that really um, left an impression on me that I watched was Money No Enough. Um, I mean, I, uh, I always thought it was Jack New who directed the film, but actually it's it's, it's not stay stay take long, but of course he, he wrote the script, and you can see a lot of um, similarities, a, a lot of the t- the typical kind of jokes that you watch on on his Monday night uh, his specials. So yeah, that that was the first movie. Um, but I mean, having said that, I'm I'm, I'm glad that uh, I mean a lot have has moved on. As, 
I mean, the film, the, the scene has developed and the vocabulary has certainly developed over the years. Um, from two, from, I mean, we, we did a count. Um, I did a little survey um, before today. Uh, we did a count of the number of local movies made since um, Medium Rare. I believe, um, I don't know, according to your book, Raphael, Medium Rare was the first so-called... Um, yeah, I don't know why it's what's in the book. <laughs> But I, I know there was a big disappearance of the, the movie scene in the 80s and, 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 and even in the mid-90s. And Medium Rare was the first movie to, to signal the comeback of, of yeah. movie making in Singapore. So um, we did a count um, from Medium Rare all the way to Elo Elo. There are about 155 to 160 films. Feature films. Feature films. Yeah. More or less. More or less in, in, in Singapore. Oh. Um, okay. Yeah, so... Um, I mean, I, we've moved on a bit, I'm, and I'd like to also ask, over these, you know, eight years, over these 160 films, what were the most memorable films, I mean, for you? One of my favourite films for, you know, in the canon of local cinema, it's not a particularly, you know, Singaporean, Singaporean kind of film. You know, you don't really get the sense that, you know, this is a movie about Singaporeans, and that's actually 430, 0430. You know, you, you don't really get the Singaporeanness of the characters or whatever. They are not really, really foregrounded uh, in any way. But hey, by the way, one half of the guy is yeah, that is Korean. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. The guy is Korean actually. The old, I mean, the older one. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. It is actually one of my favorite ones. I mean, a lot of the others, I you know, I think that are very important, like um, child stories and um, Singapore dreaming. Interestingly, um, I've asked this question to a lot of people. I know Singapore Dreaming seems to be the safe, quintessential Singapore film, the safe version that a lot of people seem to like. I, I guess because it covers uh, everything, you know. And, and yeah, how about you, Raphael? Difficult well, to say what I really prefer, but okay, it doesn't have to be one film. I know what it, it cannot be one film. Um, but me, I go back to. Uh, <laughs> A much older period sometimes, and I, I have to say uh, that I really like movies by someone called Hussein Hanif, who is from the 1960s, who passed away very quickly, made a few movies in just about a few years, and there are two very emblematic movies, which are uh, Chinta Kase Sayong and Jaron Senkampong, both 1965 movies, just when Singapore turned independent, which captured the society in those days and artistically speaking they are damn good the guy was really <laughs> brilliant you always talk about Pyramni, Pyramni, Pyramni in the old days the guy was brilliant too but it was not just Pyramni just like saying today oh Eric Koo, Eric Koo, Eric Koo no there's more to Singapore cinema than Eric Koo there was more to Singapore cinema than Pyramni um, so if you ask me what I like about Singapore cinema Yes, uh, maybe things from 1965. Of course, there's a bit of irony when I say that, and the fact that it's from that year, 1965, yeah. is very symbolic. It's also the year that Eric Koo was born. <laughs> so, uh, no, but then after that, is there a continuation? Is there a transition? Uh, was there a total gap in between all of this? I don't know. Um, from the new generation, of course, some of the movies by Eric Koo are very important and they are generally good. The guy is good at what he's doing. He knows what he's doing. You know, good production value, very good artistic sense. My preference goes to Me Book Man. I think he was the most sincere Me Book Man. It's true. It's truly Singaporean without being cliche, even though he's playing with a Me Book. Okay, but it's not too cliche. And there's something to that movie. Other than that, I'm very keen on Jack New, and I don't have to say. I have to say, uh, no, no, no. I like Jack New. <laughs> I like good Jack New. Uh, and Jack New can be really good. Uh, the I Not Stupid was really a good movie on the first one. Uh, obviously, uh, Home Run was not a bad movie. People don't mention Home Run because it's not the normal Jack New style, but he proved that he could do something else. Very good production value. Well edited, well acted. Uh, I think it suffered from the comparison with the original movie, yes. which was a very, very, very special movie within a very, very, very special context, and you don't want to compete with that, in fact. So I'm not sure that was the right positioning.